Our journey through Lent has the theme, what to do when you don't know what to do. We are learning how to trust Christ when life gets confusing. Don't forget that we are challenged to track our daily joys during this season of Lent. Get in the habit of looking for evidence of God's care. Try to write down at least one thing each day. Here is the week's challenge. Embrace the great promises of God's word. Today's Bible reading comes from Psalm 19. The first part of this psalm talks about how we see God revealed in creation. The heavens are telling the story of God. Then beginning in verse 7, we read about the power that David finds in the laws and commandments of God. Listen to this great verse. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. Psalm 19, 7. Like so many other Bible characters, David faced many times of confusion in his life, yet he found comfort and strength in the promises of God's word. For David, the laws of God did not represent harsh rules. Rather, they were words in which to rejoice. Psalm 19 ends with this well-known request. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accept acceptable to you, O, my, o Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let's close our, our I believe prayer. Father, sometimes I feel confused and don't understand why things happen the way they do. Yet I believe you love me dearly and absolutely nothing is beyond your control. Help me to live each day with confidence, trusting in the great promises of your word. Today, I am reminded that your words are intended to give me comfort and rejoicing. Thank you for giving me the strength to be an I believe person. Amen. So our journey through the Lenten season has the theme, what to do when you don't know what to do. We're learning how to trust Christ when life gets confusing. And this week we're focusing on the challenge to embrace the great promises of God's word. Let me share part of today's Bible reading that comes from chapter one of Second Peter. It talks about the precious and very great promises that God has given to us. The verse also talks about the reason God has given us these promises. We are told that through these promises, we become participants of the divine nature, and we are able to escape from the corruption that we find in the world. It's a wonderful thing to have some favorite Bible verses that we rely upon. I sometimes like to think about it this way. Imagine that you were... Uh, prisoner in another country, locked in solitary confinement. You did not have access to a printed Bible. How much Bible would you have with you? What verses would you fall back upon? That's a good reason to think about having some, some verses that are really written upon our heart, that are memorized, and that we can remember. Last week, we looked at chapter 8 of Romans, and that's always been a personal favorite of mine, especially that part near the end that we're, where we're reminded Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I can't hear that verse enough. You see, the more time we spend in the Bible, the more confidence we can have that God is giving us what we need for our lives and for growing in godliness. When we embrace that great promise, it will change our perspective on the situations we face in life. Let's close with our I Believe prayer. Father, sometimes I feel confused and don't understand why things happen the way they do. Yet, I believe you love me deeply and absolutely nothing is beyond your control. Help me to live each day with confidence, trusting in the great promises of your word. Today, I'm reminded that your divine power gives me everything needed for life and godliness. Thank you for giving me the strength to be an I believe person. Amen.
Good morning. Our journey through Lent has the theme, what to do when you don't know what to do. We are learning how to trust Christ when life gets confusing. On Wednesdays, remember that we do our daily joys a little differently and our mission is to bring joy to someone else. Find a way today to do that and write it down. Here is this week's challenge. Embrace the great promises of God's word. Back in the times of Abraham, God had given a promise to him, but it was not fulfilled until many, many years later. Under the leadership of Joshua, God's timetable often differs from human timetables. My favorite Bible verse that has helped me trust in Christ in times of confusion is Romans 8 to 8. And it says, we know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. When the Israelites first explored the land God had promised them, they were confused because the obstacles seemed so great. Yet, in God's good time, all of the promises were fulfilled. None of God's promises failed. All of them came to pass. Let's close with our I believe prayer. Father, sometimes I feel confused and I don't understand why things happen the way that they do. Yet, I believe you love me deeply, and absolutely nothing is beyond your control. Help me to live each day with confidence, trusting in the great promises of your word. Today, I am reminded that in difficult times, you want to prove to me the truth of your promises. Thank you for giving me the strength to be an I believe person. Amen. Our journey through Lent has the theme, what to do when you don't know what to do. We're learning how to trust Christ when life gets confusing. And this week's challenge, embrace the great promises of God's word. Now here's a preview of this week's promise verse. It's gonna be a part of tomorrow's reading, but let's talk about that verse just for a moment. Philippians 1, 6, the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. I like to think of ourselves as construction zones. God is in the construction business from day one until the day of Jesus. And every day should be a day of construction and growth. God doing a good work among us. In today's reading, we look at another one of the Psalms of David, Psalm 145. Take time to look through the verses of this Psalm and find some of the things for which David is praising the Lord. Look at what's on David's list and then make your own list of the reasons you desire to give praise to God. You know, here's a tip. When words fail us, we can use Psalms like this one to help focus our own thoughts. When you start to pray and nothing comes, open up the Bible, turn to a Psalm. The Psalm will help you focus your own thoughts and prayers. You could actually try praying your way through an entire psalm. And notice how the words on the page give you perspective in your heart during your own times of confusion. The challenge is to make up our minds to trust God's promises despite the confusion that we're facing. Put it very simply, God's word helps us to replace confusion with confidence. Verses 13 and 14 of this psalm have a great affirmation. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. Now that's good news. Let's close with our I Believe prayer. 
Father, sometimes I feel confused and don't understand why things happen the way they do. Yet, I believe you love me deeply and absolutely nothing, O oh God, is beyond your control. Help me to live each day with confidence, trusting in the great promises of your word. Today, I'm reminded to take you at your word and to remember that you are faithful in all your promises. Thank you for giving me the strength to be an I believe person. Amen. Our journey through Lent has the theme, what to do when you don't know what to do. We are learning how to trust Christ when life gets confusing. Here's this week's challenge. Embrace the great promises of God's word. Have you been reading the book, When Life Becomes a Maze? Chapter two reminds us of the power of keeping a written promise log. When you read a scripture promise that really touches your heart, write it down. Then keep track of times that you see that promise fulfilled in your life. Today's scripture comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians. He felt especially close to this group of Christians. He begins his letter talking about how thankful he is for them. These words mean even more when we remember that Paul wrote these words while he was in prison. What can we learn from that? Today, I'm going to share a Bible verse that has helped me trust Christ in times of confusion. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Isaiah 43, 2. Let's close with our I Believe prayer. Let us pray. Father, sometimes I feel confused, and I don't understand why things happen the way they do. Yet I believe you love me deeply, and absolutely nothing is beyond your control. Help me to live each day with confidence, trusting in the great promises of your word. Today I am reminded that you have begun a good work in me, and that you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving me the strength to be an I believe person. Amen. Well, friends, February is a short month, and it's almost over, and you know that means spring is right around the corner. What a great thing that is. By now, I'm sure you know what our Lenten theme is. What to do when you don't know what to do. Learning more and more about how to trust Christ when life gets confusing. Now, we spent this past week thinking about finding power in God's Word, so I hope you see the Bible through new eyes after this week together. Now it's time to move on to the third focus of the series. We are challenged to pursue support relationships with other believers. Our reading for today, just two short verses, words of Jesus from chapter 18 of Matthew. What a powerful promise. Truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. A simple truth about prayer is that we find more power doing it with someone else than doing it on our own. We may also find that we're more likely to sense the presence of God when we're seeking God with others. Now, in some ways, our culture is just the opposite. We tend to be a do-it-ourselves culture. It's a little less risky. Keep it to myself. 
even myself and God, but don't bring anybody else into it. It is risky to open up with someone else, but it also opens the door to power. The potential benefits are worth it. We do have to be careful. Sometimes prayer groups become chat groups. We spend our time talking to each other. Or worse, we spend our time talking about other people. I once heard a little mocking representation of a, a Christian group saying it's a time when people come together and confess the sins of those who aren't in the room. That's not what God had in mind by coming together and finding the power of confession and forgiveness. Have you ever really had the opportunity to pray in a group, not just to talk about God or talk about prayer, but to pray to talk to God in a group? Even the strongest Christian will sometimes struggle in private prayer time. That's normal. That's okay. But don't miss the opportunity that praying with others can give you. Not enough people have discovered this truth, that where two or, th two or three are gathered in his name, he is there among us. Let's close with our I Believe prayer. Father, sometimes I feel confused and I don't understand why things happen the way they do. Yet, I believe you love me deeply, and absolutely nothing is beyond your control. Help me to live each day with confidence, trusting in the great promises of your word. Today, I'm reminded that there is great power in shared prayer. Thank you for giving me the strength to be an I Believe person. Amen.